The disability movement went into full force with the baby boomer generation who made great strides for civil rights that we all enjoy today. But what does the next generation of disabled millennials look like and what are they up to in continuing the legacy of the generations that came before? We'll learn more about that on today's episode, but before I wanna remind you to please subscribe and share. Also, if you'd like to get more in depth in our community, you can join our private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. And if you'd like to support us, you can do that on patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with a disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. Today we'll be chatting with Tylea Flores, a young disabled millennial with cerebral palsy. Through her passion for life and advocacy, her determination and will is expressed through her writing, her newly released radio show, and YouTube channel, Stomping on Cerebral Palsy with Tylea. Hi, Tylea, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure's all mine. <laughs> I um, let our audience know that you're a disabled millennial already, um, but I want them to get to know you a little bit more. So if you can just give us a brief introduction about who Tylea Flores is and where does your determination and will come from? Well, thank you for that amazing introduction, Pauline. Like Pauline said, my name's Talia Flores. I'm 24 years old. I have cerebral palsy. I'm a self-published author, advocate, and radio personality. And my will and determination comes from my mom and the struggles that I went through. And what struggles did you go through? Well, I went through the typical struggles of being stereotyped in a society that wasn't really built for me, but I've been able to get through it with the support of my family. I have been bullied in school, but I overcame that by graduating. So basically from the time I was born, the odds were against me, basically, but I overcame those as well. And I was born with spastic cerebral palsy. So, you know, it's interesting because I talked about how the baby boomer generation, the people of the Judy humans and um, the Corbett O'Toole's, all of those people made huge strides with civil rights regarding people with disabilities. Uh, and yet you as a 24 year old still struggle as a woman with a disability. Um, so I'm just curious, uh, where, as a millennial, where do you see the gaps still that need to be filled in in regards to disability advocacy and inclusion? Well, I just feel like there needs to be more awareness to disabilities when it comes to schools and bringing awareness to disability history and what these advocates went through. And people need to remember just to be kind to us because we've come from a very long way, but yet there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, like the school public school system is terrible for people with special needs. And I hate to say that, but it is. And there's a lot of situations where we deal with a lot of teachers that aren't qualified to teach kids and students. I mean, look at the example. I went through something in high school where the aides refused to take me to the bathroom. One of the aides got in my face. She tormented me and she only got two days suspension with pay. No justice was done, even though my mom fought for, for the woman to be fired. They couldn't fire her under union laws. Mm. So that's where the gap is still. There's still people that discriminate. There's still people that don't fully understand us and what we go through. So I would feel like the gap is between still educate education 
and giving people the understanding of, yes, I may have a disability, but don't treat me this way because I have one. I am human. Besides the fact that I use this chair that's built behind me and the wheels that are behind me, I am human. Right, right. And I think that's reflected in all the writings that you do. You're a contributing writer for tons of publications, primarily online. You do your radio show. What's the name of your radio show called? Stomping on Cerebral Palsy with Positive Thoughts. And you could catch that on Fridays at 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Let Go Radio Station. Awesome. And you just released a YouTube channel. Yes, I just released my YouTube channel. I mean, I've had it for several years, but this time around, I decided to relaunch it because it needed to be relaunched. And you guys can follow me on YouTube as well. It's just my name. And I talk about anything and anything advocacy related and cerebral palsy related. I have a book out, James Taking Time Bomb, working on a second book currently in school for creative writing for entertainment world and i finished may 3rd so young 24 year old doing a lot to contribute to creating this understanding that people with disabilities are human all have the same desires as everybody mm -hmm. else all have similar um fears have joys um and that's so important um and you said that education is where the crux of the effort probably needs to be in terms of helping bridge that gap for your generation and generations to come. Um, exactly. And what do you think and that looks like? Having courses in schools that explain disabilities, not only to the teachers, but to the students as well. And it could prevent bullying from happening. I know there were plenty of times, especially when I entered puberty and entered into middle school, I would be at lunch sitting at, sitting at the table crying because nobody wanted to sit with the handicapped girl in the wheelchair. I can't even imagine anyone not wanting to sit with you. You are such a firecracker. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have my stories. Like one time, um, the cafeteria lady, she was a young lady in the kitchen, Mrs. Brown, I'm going to put her name out there. And she said, where do you want to sit? Sit anywhere. And I, I chose a table and these group of four girls, they, they reminded me of the mean girls. I don't know if you guys seen this movie. Were like, you're going to sit here? Why here? Why don't you go sit with the rest of the handicapped kids? And I'm like, because I'm not like them like i don't want to sit by them because i can't relate to all people that are disabled and i just wanted friends outside of that zone you know right because in, in public school they have the issue of labeling everybody with a disability as the same and it's not you may have a person with cerebral palsy that's good at one thing but not good at the other and that was the dilemma i was having in public school right Right, and I think that's a misconception that so many people have, like, oh, well, if you're disabled, you need to hang out with disabled people, right? And you don't. You can get, get along with everybody, but you just have to know your social boundaries and your social limit. Like, I'm a social butterfly, and you know this. Yes, yes, I do. And everything. So I like mingling with everybody, but it's just sometimes I just don't want to hang out with the dis able crew because of the stereotypes behind that like oh look at her she's disabled she only hangs out with disabled people right right and and that's um like i said a misconception and that if that was applied that kind of thinking was applied to any other minority group you know asians african americans latinos like we should all just stick to our kind that's not the um that is not the true definition of inclusion um, and hopefully we can get to a time in our world when we're all just seen as people regardless exactly. of what we look like on the outside right and so mm -hmm. how would you say your generation the millennials is different from perhaps the baby boomers or even my generation generation x well, I think we're a lot different because now we have the tool of technology and social media and Facebook to connect with others like us, 
that could help support us throughout the days of our bad days and our good days. And we just have this incredible worldwide options versus where you guys didn't have that option. So I couldn't imagine how you grew up in a society that you felt wasn't made for you. And then you didn't have nobody to go to, you know? Yeah. No, and then that's actually what was behind the motivation of me creating One Leg Up Productions is because I felt like it was so unnecessary for someone like myself or any other person <clears throat> with a disability to have no role models or anyone to connect with that truly gets it. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we connect. So I actually met Tylea through a program we created called Crip Chat. And it's a Zoom connection call that was came out of this coronavirus quarantine, but now has established itself as the go-to place every Saturday to hang out with people with disabilities. Because like you said, Tylea, um, not, there's not a lot of people with disabilities walking the street. So, and even if there are, it doesn't mean you're always going to connect. Just because you have a disability no. doesn't mean that's your instant bond and we're bonded for life, right? But no. um, there's more to, the, more to a friendship than that. But in reality, I'm often the only disabled person in my friend group. And you probably are often the only disabled person in your friend group. Yeah, and sometimes you meet people with disabilities and you don't like them. Right. Just, they just have a different perspective. Right. I've had to cut off friends because they're like, my life is so bad, it's depressing. I'm like, why? They're like, do you see what's wrong with us? Like, I'm like, there's nothing wrong with us. Like, stop it. Stop Stop having this petty party, okay? Right. Like, cerebral palsy is awesome. <laughs> And that's the best attitude you can have. And I think um, when I asked you what's behind your determination and will, um, like you, I'm close to my mom and she was my champion and cheerleader growing up. But really you adopt that for yourself and you start adopting a vision about who you are and knowing you have value and can contribute value to the world regardless of whether you have a disability or not. And so to just be like, I'm awesome. And I'm, you know, and I have cerebral palsy, but I'm awesome. And by the way, I have cerebral palsy, right? Like it's yeah, not like, like you're awesome no matter what. Yeah, I agree with that. But my mom has always been the one to drive me to do things that I didn't particularly want to do. Like every time I had a, like an issue in school, she would always be there fighting. And I think... That's where I get my advocacy fighting voice from is from her because she had to do it for me. Yes. Trust me, they were, there were times in IEP meetings where the teachers would fall out of their chairs on what she was saying. But I thank <laughs> her. No, it's true. She even cursed one of them out once. Go moms. <laughs> we need our strong moms. Because the psychiatrist said I had long-term memory and short-term memory. Oh. And she thought she could pull one over on my mom because at the time they wanted me on a special diploma. And that's the thing with public schools, too. As soon as they, they see you have a disability, they're like, oh, she has to be on a special diploma. My mom's like, no, she doesn't. Right. She's doing the same amount of work. She's going, like, she's doing algebra. You're sending her home with a packet of English, algebra, science. Why can't she be on a regular diploma? Well, Miss Flores is protocol. Well, you don't want to know what mom did. She yanks me out of the public school and homeschools me. And she's like, you're getting a regular diploma. And I did just that six years ago. And awesome. now I'm about to graduate trade school. So, Awesome. Awesome. And it's hard when the standards from outside world is so low for mm -hmm. you. And you have to stand for something bigger. And you have to stand or what you know your potential is and can become. Like I always told myself, I don't want to be a part of a statistic. I want to be somebody's inspiration. I want to be an inspiration to the newer generation of people with CP. And if you had one message to give to your generation, what would that be? Keep on stomping despite the obstacles. Don't let your disability define who you are. You're who you are for a reason, but don't let your disability hinder you from living your life to the best of your ability. And like my motto is, you got to stomp on CP. 
Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Tylea. I so appreciate your time and your voice. Um, there is a lot of work still yet to be done. There, we have come so far in terms but, of- But yeah, we're still, we're still behind. And I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you wanna know what scares me is that history is repeating itself. If you watch Crip Camp and you see what's going on now, not getting into politics, it's like we're, we're, we're re-watching what we went through almost 26 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and, and speaking of Crip Camp, um, that movie is a documentary on Netflix. If you guys haven't seen it, I would highly recommend that you go to Netflix and you watch the film. It won Sundance Film Festival Awards already. It's amazing. And, you know, even I was moved and proud to be part of the dis this disability community. How did it affect you? It made, from the beginning of the movie, I heard about it coming out and I'm like, yes, finally a movie on disability rights because I've studied it. You know, my hero is Ed V. Uh, Roberts. He was the, he had a polo and he was the founder of independence for people with disabilities. And he attended the University of Berkeley and I've always looked up to him. And to watch that movie and to see everything that those advocates had to go through just to make sure that we have what we needed, like the 504 plan. I mean, I moved, I was moved by that movie and it made me cry and it motivated me to do more. Yeah, absolutely. It does infuse you with a new verb for advocacy and understanding and being so appreciative of what they did in their generation to ensure that the basics were there. Mm -hmm. But now- now we have to go beyond the basics and it's almost now a shift of attitude. It's not really a ramp or an elevator or the bus. It's, it's people's minds and attitudes toward disability that now need to be worked on. And the way they view it. Like I know, like I've came across so many people that were ableist. It's ridiculous, but I had to put them in check sometimes. And it's like, why do I have to put you in check? you're 30 something years old, you're 40 something years old, you should know better. Like, don't sit there and say, oh, well, she's a, she's handicapped or she's crippled, so she may not understand. And I hate those words, I hate the word crippled. Okay, and, and for our audience who's not familiar with the term ableist, can you um, describe what you think that means? A person that is discriminatory against somebody with a disability, and how have you experienced ableism? Okay, so one time I was at a buffet with my friend and the lady was like, you're handicapped. Why are you eating in my buffet? And I was like, what? So my friend at the time, she got up, she's, she, was rush, she was rushing and she came from this like, country you know she got up and she said how dare you you should be ashamed come on ty we're getting pizza wow wow so blatant discrimination still exists and you've experienced yeah. that in your young life yeah i mean my mom doesn't know that this story but she'll know now she'll know now but yeah. I'm happy to <laughs> sorry mom <laughs> I'm happy to say that I went through that because that was the first time without her. And I was like, and one time with her, I was at Walmart and the lady, we're standing at the cash register and the lady goes, I'm sorry if I'm being nosy, but what is wrong with your daughter? And my mom's like, you are being nosy. And what is wrong with you? Right. <laughs> it's right. Like, people don't know how to like talk to us. Right. And like access cool like and then there's people like I enjoy when people come up to me and pray, but don't do it while I'm in the middle of eating. Right. <laughs> like I'm like don't like don't be like dear heavenly father, we I'm 
But then the other people look and they're like, oh my God, look at the poor, look at the poor girl in the wheelchair. She's getting preyed upon, you know? Right. And preyed could be two words, P-R-E-Y and P-R-A-Y. <laughs> yeah. Or people talking in like this baby voice. Like, right. do not speak to me in a baby voice. I am going to be 25 years old. Do right. not speak to me that way because I don't like it. Or if I'm at the doctor's office, I'm telling them what's wrong with me and they talk to mom. I'm like, but she's not talking to you. I'm talking to you. Treat me as an adult and treat me with the respect. How does it make you feel? Awful when they do that. It's like, come on now. Just, just don't see the chair for a second. See that I'm a human. And another thing that annoys me is when I go to a doctor and the doctor's ableist as well. I had this one doctor. I'm not going to say her name because I can't. But she examines me. She was a specialist. She goes, this is the worst case of cerebral palsy I've seen. Cerebral palsy is a serious disease. I looked at her, Paulina. I said, number one, doctor, blah, blah, blah. You should educate yourself. Cerebral palsy is a condition. It's not a disease. And if this is the worst you ever seen, God bless your heart, because I'm still living. Right, right. How did she respond? She looked at me. She's like, she looked at me and my mom, and she didn't say nothing but shook her head. I said, yep, that's what you get. You shouldn't have, like, judged me based on my medical diagnosis, which you know nothing about. Yeah, yeah. I can relate to a lot of your experiences, Tylea, and I know um, that I often feel dismissed, disregarded, uh, every anything dissed, right? Just dissed because um, either people underestimate you um, or they just... They, you make them feel so uncomfortable, they just can't, they're besides themselves, they don't know how to respond to us. And, and so... And what bothered me when the doctor said that, because she was a specialist in cerebral palsy, and I'm like, if I'm the worst case you ever seen, what happened to the rest of the people that suffer from severe epilepsy, the ones that can't talk and tell their parents what is going on? The ones that have to have feeding tubes. Like, yeah, my cerebral palsy may be hard, but I can't complain. I'm I'm lucky that my cerebral palsy wasn't as bad, you know, but I think about those people all the time that they have the cerebral palsy so bad that they can't speak for themselves and they're just trapped in their mind. That's why I started doing advocacy, to be honest. Right, right. Because I wanted to be that voice for those people to say, oh, she feels the same way I do. Maybe if I show my parents this article that she wrote or that video that she did, it could, they could finally get where I'm coming from. And I had one one parent uh, from Mexico that uh, he was a single father of his son with CP. And he wrote to me back when I first started my YouTube channel, I did a video on cerebral palsy and spastic sticking and um sleeping and he he wrote me a heartfelt note he was like you know thank you i finally feel what my son goes through wow and, and that right there is why i do what i do yes every yes. single day yeah and sometimes i meet me up till 2 30 in the morning writing an article 4 30 in the morning recording a show you know, doing my, doing my live streams, doing the writing, doing the advocacy, but I don't care as long as somebody hears what I have to say and it could impact them. Great. Same thing with my social media. I don't use it to impress people. I use it to inspire people to say, wow, look at her. She's living her life. Maybe I need to start do, doing the same things too. Like when I first went out to to a nightclub, I purposely took a picture of myself drinking a Coke and rum. Yeah. So that people could see that, yes, I may be disabled, I may have cerebral palsy, but I live my life to the best of my ability. Right. And you still want to have a good time. 
<laughs> yeah, you, mean, you know, and yeah, yeah, no, and and you know, advocacy. I think between the baby boomer generation when the disability movement first started to now looks different, right? We have the technology to be able to get our voices out there in a bigger way to connect to people in a bigger way. And Tylea, I just want to thank you so much for being that voice for your generation. I know you're one of many, but each one counts. And each one. yes, each one and, counts. And it doesn't matter where you start. Like I started at 18 thanks to Facebook and thanks to the World Wide Web. So yeah, it's never too late to start advocating if you're watching it as long as you do it. It's the minute you sit at home and you want a petty party and you complain about your life and the things that are wrong with society and you don't do something. That's when the problem starts. You have to get out there and you have to do something about it. Right. And, and when we say do something about it, it doesn't always look like picketing a building and protesting no. out there. It could be just sharing your story and putting yourself out there in a vulnerable way that makes people want to connect to you to listen up and, and shift their perspective of what and, disability means and looks like. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why I started all this stuff. I've been a published author since I was 16, advocating since I was 18. And I love what I do and I'm going to do it for the rest of my life. Awesome. Well, we are blessed then to have you do that for the rest of your life. Um, Tylea, I'm going to ask our viewers, if you're watching this right now and you're a millennial with a disability, I'd love to hear from you. What is it that you see still needs to be worked on? What issues still need advocacy to promote disability inclusion and equality in our world so that way we are all um, seen for our potential and can take full advantage of the opportunity and the privilege to live a full life. Um, I want to ask you to also to please subscribe and share. I think this video um, on this episode, it's a great opportunity to inspire other young voices to come forward and be the light in our world um, today. And so please subscribe and share this channel and this video. And also, if you'd like to get into more deeper conversation, join our private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. And if you'd like to see more from One Leg Up Productions, you can support us financially at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until we meet again, be blessed. Thank you.